Let's create some assignments in Canvas. I am super glad you're here. There's some important updates that Canvas made just over the last month or so. So to create an assignment, I'm gonna start by going into this 146 class, and there's two different ways that you can do it. You can either do it through the assignments tab. This way is not my favorite, so I'm not actually gonna do it this way. You could do it through assignments and then click on add assignment and add the assignment this way but then you've got the extra step of putting it into the module so instead of doing that i'm going to go right into my classes modules and you can see that i've got an assignment built here already let's go ahead and build one from scratch i do want to put it in the week one module so i'm going to start by clicking on the plus button that's over here on the right hand side so i click on that I'm gonna add an assignment and I'm gonna choose create assignment. Now, if you had created one that other way, that assignment would show up here and you could add it from this list. This is also a way to do it if you're importing assignments, but we're gonna create one from scratch. So I'm gonna click on create assignment and then I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name and I'm gonna call it analyzing. Um, and if I can spell that right, analyzing logical statements. Okay, um, you can indent it or not. I usually indent my assignments. I'll do it one level. And then I hit add item. It's actually a two-step process. So I've added the assignment, but I haven't actually created anything yet. So my second step is to click on the assignment and build it. So I'm gonna click on the assignment. I'm just clicking on that name. Then I wanna go ahead and make some edits. So I'm gonna click this edit button that's up here in the upper right hand corner. And this is going to allow me to change that title if I wanna change the title. I can also add instructions here. Now this is my rich content editor, which means that I can, I can add images, I can change the color of my text, I can italicize, I can add media, so many different things that you can do to make your instructions really, really clear and also a little more engaging. Clearly what I have there is not super engaging. Now let's go ahead and scroll down to the other options. So you can give it a point total. Most of these things can be adjusted at a later date. So don't worry too much about getting it perfect here. Now the assignment groups, I've already built my assignment groups. If you wanna learn about assignment groups, take a look at my video, how to create the gradebook in Canvas. I've already created those, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop it right into assignments. I wanna display that as points, but you've got a couple of different options there. And I do wanna count it in the gradebook. And then this next one, submission type, is super, super important so that it matches what your students are turning in. Let's go ahead and click on the options. The first option is no submission, and you would leave it at no submission if you were doing, say, like presentations in class, something that the student wasn't actually turning anything in, but something that you're giving them points for. Um, so that would be no submission. Online gives you several different options. So with online, you can do a text entry and know that each one of these that you click will create a different tab when the student opens the assignment. So you can give them several different options. I tend to really limit it. So you can do a text entry where the student is just typing in their responses. You can do a website URL. This would be if a student copied, maybe it was a Google Doc or a Google Sheet. My warning on this one, I've learned the hard way that students will post their link by the due date, but not actually have it finished, knowing that it's gonna be a while before you get to grading it. So just a little warning there. We also have media recordings. This is when you're requiring your students to do a recording. And with the media recording tab, they can choose based on your requirements to do a video that includes visual and audio, or they can do an audio recording. So lots of really nice options there. The student annotation, this one would be if you had a worksheet for your students. I'm going to upload this worksheet that I created and that worksheet will open up for the student once they open that tab. It will open up for the student and they'll be able to make annotations. They can click on the text option and then type their answers into text boxes. Really cool, a lot like 
um, a written worksheet. So a really great answer to the written worksheet. Last but not least is file uploads and just a couple of notes on this one. I'm gonna click the restrict upload file types. You can absolutely leave it unclicked, but I have learned over the years that I can't always read everybody's file type. So I know that I can read everybody's PDF. So I'll ask students to save it as a PDF file. And notice how there's an, uh, an example down here. It looks like you can leave that dot off. So PDF comma. I also know that Canvas, at least as of this recording, will not open up the .heic photos. And those are the photos for the most part that students are taking with their iPhones. So instead, I am gonna require a JPEG. Now I'm really nice and I'll let them submit a .heic. I can't remember what that stands for, high efficiency something. Um, and then I convert it, but that can be a pain, especially if you've got a big class. So I allow PDFs, I allow JPEGs, maybe you wanna allow um, PNGs. I mean, so there's some you know different options that you can do here, but kind of think about what's gonna make your life easier. It's really just a one-step process for your students to get it into the right type. But if you've got you know, 30, 40 students, then you've got that one step 30 or 40 times. So definitely think about that. Now I clicked on all of these and you do not want to click on all of these, but I'm gonna leave them all clicked because I really wanna show you what they look like when you're all done here. Now these were just the online options. Remember there were two others. So we also could have had on paper. I use this one a lot when my students are just turning in um, worksheets in class. I mean, physical pieces of paper. So they know there's nothing that they've got to submit here online. So that's the on paper option. And then that third option is an external tool. So you might be connecting to some other program. We're gonna stick with those online submission types for this example. Now submissions of attempts, I leave that at unlimited just in case some technical problem happens, but you can also limit that. You have some group assignment options here as well. And it's not letting me do a group assignment because I have that um, student annotation one checked. So if I unchecked the student annotation, then I would have some group assignment options and I could create groups here as well. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm just gonna cancel. I'm gonna put that student annotation type, take group assignments off, put student annotation types back in. And then um, peer reviews. Um, I'm, I'm not an English teacher, so I don't do a lot of peer reviews, but I know that a lot of my colleagues do. Um, anonymous grading, I don't grade them anonymously. And then this is the big update that Canvas did um, mid-summer quarter. I don't know how many of you teach in the summer, but instead of having your due dates would be right here, instead you've got to just click on this manage due dates and assign to. Like not a big deal, it's still pretty intuitive. So I'm gonna click on that to bring up my due dates. So the default is to assign to your entire class, like makes sense, right? And I'm going to say that this is due on August 5th. You can do an available from date. So if you don't want students to see it before a certain time, you can do that. I usually leave this one um, blank. And then I almost always do an until date. That way I don't have late assignments trickling in that I need to grade. And my students know that they have an automatic two day grace period. So I'm gonna put this one as August 7th for this one. To give a student an extension different than these dates, you can do that right here and you can click the add button. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll a little bit so you can see all of those options. And I'm gonna just start to type in the student's name and then choose that student and then give them their due date. So maybe I wanna give them until the end of the week, but I'm also gonna put that until date on there. And then I'm gonna go into August here and I'm gonna say they've got there until the 12th. Then when I've got it, how I like it, I can go ahead and hit apply. That applies the due dates. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and publish. We have the assignment created, but it's really, really important that you actually have it published. So make sure that this green box says published. The other way that you can check just at a glance, I'm going to go over here and click on modules. The other way that you can check at a glance is to make sure that these circles are green. Now I strongly recommend at this point that you take just a second and check this out in student view. So I'm here in my assignment. 
Up in the right hand corner, I've got the view as student. And this is gonna give you a student whose name literally is test first name, um, student last name. So I'm gonna click on view as student. And remember, I left all of those different submission types there. And I want you to see what that looks like. So as I click through these, this is the student annotation one. Notice it brought up that worksheet and the student also has these annotation options. The easiest one I think for my students to use would be just the text box. Maybe they'll click on a different color and then click wherever to answer the, um, the question. I don't think that was a valid argument. So this one is invalid and I believe it was fallacy of the inverse. And then see how easy that is. And then they can go down, click again to put their answer in. And when they have it how they want, they're gonna scroll down and click submit assignment. I'm not gonna do that yet because I wanna show you the other types. File upload, just like we did. They're gonna upload a file and then choose one from their computer, cancel. Also gives them a place right here to add some comments to you. Next is the text entry, and this is where I would recommend that the student either types in their responses, so types in responses, or maybe they type them in a Word document and then copy and paste them here. Hopefully they don't do that in ChatGPT, but anyway, website URL is next. Now I've already copied the um, website for a Google Doc that I created, so if I click here, it's gonna let me just choose that. And then finally is the media option. So if you want your students to record media for you, um, either a video or an audio recording, you can scroll up just a little bit here. We can go ahead and turn on that webcam. I've got that one covered up, so I want this one. And then you can turn that mic on as well. That one works. And then the student can go ahead and record um, you know, you know, something for you. It's such a nice, easy, quick way. They don't need to worry about up loading anything and they hit finish and once they're done let me get down here to the save media they can go ahead and save the media so for whichever way you wanted them to submit their final step is to submit assignments and once you've got these assignments don't you love the confetti and once you've got the assignments from your students then you're going to want to grade them and i've got a video for you right here explaining the very best way to do that you got this